wonder where this goes. If anywhere. Might not go anywhere. See this little St. Malo Chapel, it's built on a huge rock, huge granite rock. That's why it's called Church on the Rock. Well, look at these raspberry bushes. There's Cabin Creek right here, flowing. Nice fresh water. I thought there'd be a little trail around the back of this chapel, but there really isn't. It's kind of a little makeshift pathway. It's nice and cool up here. What a contrast it is to down in the front range. Let's go take a walk over here. It's a little parking area for people who want to go into the little chapel. I already have a video going into that little chapel. So right over here is about like a visitor, so I guess there's a little coffee shop in there. I've never been there. This is part of Cabin Creek. Cabin Creek. See there's Mount Meeker. Cabin Creek starts right in that ravine. See, there's a little bit of snow. Falls that ravine all the way down. Trickles through the old St. Malo camp. It was a camp for boys. Started in 1915 by Joseph Bosetti. And then the St. Malo Chapel, I think it was built about the same year. It's about the same year Rocky Mountain National Park became a official national park. That Mount Meeker is such a looming mountain. It's the second highest mount, second tallest mountain in Rocky Mountain National Park. While Long's Peak is the tallest. Mount Meeker is named after uh, Nathan Meeker. Nathan Meeker was a was an old guy. He established the town of Greeley. He went over to Meeker, established the town of Meeker. He tried to get the Ute Indians to uh, to go go into agriculture, and finally they revolted and killed killed him and his family. He's buried in Lynn Grove Cemetery in Greeley. How's it going? Hi, good. good. So let's just take a short stroll through the old camp, St. Malo. I think, I think it was closed to boy uh, as a boy camp in 1980s. And I think the Catholics, Archdiocese of Denver, I think they still use it as a retreat. But a lot of the buildings, like some of the buildings were a fire, burned down one. And in 2013, there was a huge, um, I don't know if you guys know, 2013 Colorado had a, some huge rainstorms and uh, kind of flooded everywhere. I think I kind of flooded out some of the buildings too. Just want to see how far I can go up here. The reason I'm here is that I have a story to tell you. I'll try to do the best I can. Natural preservation area, no travel beyond this point. Do they mean this point or that point? So I just want to go up here. Um, I don't think there's anybody up here. 
I don't want to disturb too many people. Oh, they're chopping some trees down. Anyway, have you heard of the story of Bobby Bizup? B-I-Z-U-P, Bizup. Partially deaf child, used a hearing aid. Back in those days, hearing aids didn't do too good of a job. Uh, this was back, disappeared in 1958. He was born July 4th, 1948. Died August 15th, 1958. He lived in Park Hill neighborhood with his parents, Master Sergeant Joseph Bizup and his mom Constance. Joseph and Bobby are both laid to rest at Fort Logan Cemetery. So back in August of 1958, um, Bobby was in this uh, camp here. Hi there. How old is this building? This is 1921. 1921, beautiful. I have a YouTube channel. Is it okay if I videotape it's parts of this? Um, yeah, in here. Yeah. That might be fine. Don't okay. get me though. No, I won't. <laughs> I just want to see how the structure is so beautiful. How is it? These rafters are cool. I'm busy, yeah. but not too busy. I'm just busy with water. This was our yep. good cellar. A good, yep, it's a good thing. Yeah, that's um, off of that. Um, yeah. And then the one guy called the tow truck, but then he canceled the tow truck. Oh, they got him. He said he said something came and yeah. then he called it. He canceled it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I tell you, we got to get the extra cable. We need business. Yeah, just you know, what happened? Uh, <laughs> the uh, there was an adventure van uh, with a lot of bike racks and stuff in the back, and the uh, little.